Chris Crone here, and today we're gonna to be jamming on should you pay down your rental properties? Should you be concerned with paying them off? Should you pay off your rental properties quickly? I got Stephen Michael Miller here with me How's today, going, and we're gonna be tackling this question. I just wanna do a little shout out to Morris Invest. Clayton Morris, he posed this very question, and there's a principle that he talks about that we wanna add, which is ultimately, how do you actually get your mortgages paid down as little as possible, and how do you snowball your real estate Steven, take it away. Chris, let's talk about the 30-year game plan because I think this is the plan that most people, when they start off in investing, this is what they gravitate towards, right? It's this idea of let's buy a property, let's hold it for 30 years because I have a 30-year mortgage on this home, pay it all off, and at the end of that 30 years, I have a paid off free and clear property that I'm getting massive amounts of cash flow from. And it sounds really good, except that you're allowing the bank to dictate your life mm. because now you're on a 30-year plan instead of a 20-year plan or 20-year plan. And I know investors will say, oh, Let's play with the bank even more. Let's do a 15 year mortgage and even go negative cash flow because we can afford it. And when all you're doing in that scenario is you're working with the bank and following the bank's rules and systems. But I just gotta tell you, if you don't know, on a 30 year plan, you're gonna pay for that house two and a half times. And the most of the interest is actually gonna go to the bank first. So does the 30 year plan work? Yeah. I mean, it, it works, but there are better ways. And I think this is what we really want to jump into. And I think that Clayton Morris would probably also agree with us when we say, look, for us, it's about making sure you pay the littlest amount of money for your money. Uh, cash is king in your pocket today. So we want to help you understand how the 30 year plan may not be the best. And you may want to be looking towards maybe more of a 10 year plan. Chris, yeah. talk to me about the 10 year plan. Well, and you got to understand to make the 10 year plan possible, there's one more flaw of the 30 year plan. When, and it comes down to what's going to happen to that property with years. Well, as time oh, passes, yeah. your property is going to dilapidate, it right? Will. It it's, will. You're going to incur more expensive furnaces are going to go out, AC units are going to go out, it's going to need paint, it's going to need carpet. And one of the things you're going to find if you've been in the real estate game for a while is that every seven years, if it's been rented out, your property looks hammered. Yeah. Even if your tenants have done a relatively good job taking care of your house, bottom line is carpet wears out and eventually walls get covered up with all sorts of things that need to be repainted and appliances wear out and, and, the, and the fixtures and the furniture furniture and everything eventually and, and roofs dilapidate. Wear and tear. And yeah. so that just means that all the cash flow that you're collecting, collecting today, I got three properties, I got 350 cash flow on each one, I'm making a thousand dollars a month, just wait long enough and that money is going to have to go back into your property and when you do the 30 year plan, trust me, you are going to put every penny of that cash flow back into the property at some point. So 30 years from now, you do get a paid off property but what do you get along the way? you get very little and a lot of stories of headaches over the years. So this 10 year plan that Steven's yeah. talking about is a way of how do I allow my, my properties to flow like a river and recycle them more freely as that water moves down the mountain, meaning how do I hold onto a property for its optimal period of time and then trade up, not more expensive, trade into more real estate. Chris, this is one of those things we've been teaching for a long time. And if you've got your pen and paper out, get ready to take some notes because really one of the things that we talk about all the time is not getting into that dilapidation time frame, right? And for us, usually that's a five to seven year period. You're going to hold on to these properties for five to seven years. Now you're still kind of taking the same route as you were with the 30 year plan. In other words, your goal is eventually to have these properties paid off. Just faster. Just faster. You're going to be doing it a little bit differently. So you're going to hold on to this property for five to seven years, then you're going to recycle what Chris was saying, right? You're going to take those monies from that property. You're going to take it out of that property, do what we call a, do we want to talk about it? 1031 exchange yep. into another property, right? Which means basically you're going to avoid some taxes for a while, put it into another property and, and that's going to buy down that property even more. Once you do that a few times, the property will get paid off. You're just going to avoid a lot of dilapidation repairs we've been talking about. Yeah, and there's two ways to recycle your property. The first is, Stephen's right, the law of diminishing returns dictates that after seven years, you've made the majority of the easy good money there is, and now that you're going to see a steep decline in ROI. And now you're just holding out for 30 years when the mortgage is paid off. If you want to go faster, like Stephen said, there's two strategies. One is, after that fifth to seventh year of hold, we're going to sell that property and recycle it by selling it, whether you're using a 1031 exchange, to defer and delay taxes or before that five to seven year time frame you can refinance it which is also a tax deferred event so either through hold the property longer but pull my money out and get it to work for me or it's ripened to the point where it's time to sell and now put it into two more properties what this does and the reason why it actually accelerates your results is it allows you to get into more property if one property in 30 years can be paid off 
then rolling it into several properties in 10 years could lead to multiple paid off properties way sooner, which by the way, you know, 30 years from now, paid off property, what's it going to do? Yield you $1,500 a month in, in today's dollars or 10 years, we're talking about, let's say, five paid off properties producing five to $8,000 a month. Mm -hmm. I don't know about you, but if I can save time and I can make more money, and what we're doing here is really simple. You just need a strategy for rolling it into the next property. And I wanna bring up one more point, Stephen. There's one more big benefit that you get when you're rolling it. You're getting the benefit of buying intelligent property with equity. So if I sell a property today, and I roll it into two more properties. And if I buy those properties at a discount with a superior cash flow to what I previously had, that's what I mean by trading up. Now I have two properties working for me, two machines that are working day and night for me, as opposed to just one. And it also means that you can get to your goal a lot faster. So should you pay off your rental properties quickly? I think the answer is yes. It just may look a little bit different than you've been taught. Instead of going the 30 year route, you may want to take the 10 year game plan, recycle those properties, get into more properties faster actually, and then increase your cash flows, increase your wealth. This is the way we've been doing it for years now. Now, if you want a specific game plan on what that looks like, we can give you the math and show you how to accelerate it substantially. Steven and I, our acquisition company has created some substantial reports on what our properties have done, how they perform, and whether it's just to give you an example of what you can do in your own investing, or whether you want to team up with us and take you into the best markets to do that, click the link up here, get access to that free report, and we'll give you more of that information. So should you pay off your rental properties quickly? Well, ultimately, one more important is the strategy of how you're doing it, because that'll ultimately determine how fast you can do it. Thank you for watching today's video and look forward to bringing more your way. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, ring the bell, and we'll keep more coming your way.